I'm gonna give you 15 exercises that you can use to get explosive for CrossFit, and we're gonna start right now. I'm Dane Miller, Olympic strength coach, and I've coached at 10 world championships, and I've even helped a master's athlete get third at the CrossFit Games. And one of the big factors here is that when I'm looking at explosive movements for CrossFit, when someone comes in the door here at Garage Strength and we're thinking through that lens, okay, they're a CrossFitter, they've gotta do things that are going to be very explosive. They have to have crazy endurance. They've gotta have good technique. The first thing that I do is go, okay, what are some of the pillar movements that are oftentimes in a CrossFit competition, okay? And that first thing would be, we have to focus on double unders. So if we're thinking through the lens of double unders, we have to be pretty good at jumping rope, right? And so if we're gonna try and improve their overall ability to jump rope, one, we could probably use that in a simple manner of just using this as a warm-up. But then we can also work on their actual double under skills. And then another aspect that I like to use is that we'll use something called Athlete Day. In our programming, which is available in our strength training app, Peak Strength, we'll use Athlete Day with crazy jumps, stair jumps, single leg jumps, bilateral jumps, hurdle hops, anything along those lines. But one of my favorites is just doing simple pogo hops, okay? So if I'm having an athlete do double unders and I notice they can't really jump, they got cinder blocks in their feet. Maybe they're a little bit older, maybe they haven't been that athletic in the past or they haven't done uh, athletic tests. We'll use a pogo hop here, okay? And we'll try and teach them that arm swing and keep their heel from landing. So we actually want to think about the heel staying elevated and all of their jumping coming from the ankle. So mainly from the ankle, a little bit from the knee, and then that arm swing. So we have to focus on one, athlete day. Build up their plyometric capability, okay? Two, we can do pogo hops. We can even do staggered pogo hops here, okay? And then three, obviously using the jump rope on a consistent basis. You can do it timed, you can do it for speed, you can do double unders, and that can build up that overall explosiveness so that they can keep getting better. What else can we do? Okay, so the second movement that we try to think through, a normal CrossFitter comes in, they want to get better at their weekend competitions. That's who we're trying to build this video towards. We're trying to give you guys those exercises so that you can then lay out that program or you can use Peak Strength to help you improve in your CrossFit comps. Now, second movement is going to be focusing on barbell cycling, okay? So we might be doing something like a snatch variation or a snatch, a clean variation or some clean, and we're going to be able to cycle the bar. The big thing that I like to think about is learning from other athletes that use some type of cycling at very, very high loads. Throwers, shot putters, discus throwers are known for doing barbell cycling well before CrossFit ever existed. So we can pull from that realm to help you improve your barbell cycling. Now, the other aspect is that we have to understand technique. And if we can just think about if we're doing a snatch, we have to think about how can we keep the bar tight. If we're doing a traditional snatch, all we have to think about, push through the heels, keep the chest up, okay? And that's gonna help the knees come back. So the knees should come back as the bar comes to the knee. Okay, so the knees will come back here. Then as the chest continues to come up, we want to think about hip flexion or hip extension, sorry, hip extension coming through and knee flexion. Okay, so the knees come back, the knees reciprocate underneath. Okay, we actually call this the reciprocation point right here. This is no man's land. This is the reciprocation point. We come through here. Now we're in this hip position here. The chest keeps coming up and we finish. That has to be what we think through when we're executing any type of movement that involves weightlifting. The first exercise for barbell cycling would be just executing a pump, okay? So we wanna find rhythm here. And a lot of athletes struggle just doing this. So start with the bar. You can literally just start with a barbell, okay? So we wanna think, reload, up. Hip flexion, hip extension, boom. Boom, okay, find that rhythm. This is a really, really good drill to start with, just finding that pump rhythm. The next thing that I like to do, I refer to as the Dane Snatch, okay, would be we go below the knee and we come up here, okay? Now, if you notice, my knees are coming back and my chest is coming up. And all I'm thinking about is this pump position here and then we get into the snatch. Oh, my shoulders, I'm so tight. So the first two, Movements to improve your barbell cycling are going to be those pumps, 
find the rhythm, find the rhythm, find the rhythm, keep it tight. Don't let it pull you forward. And that's gonna improve your barbell cycling. So it could look like this with weight on. So the pump snatch would look something like this, where we're here, we go one, two, three, okay? That could be a version that you use to improve that overall feeling in the catch or the feeling in the pull. Bring that down, if we're gonna do a day snatch, it'd be one, two, three, boom, okay? So that's a way to help improve your barbell cycling. And then after you do the high pumps, and then after you train with the Dane snatch, then over time you can lead into that barbell cycling. But the main goal then is when we're executing the barbell cycle is trying to keep the chest up. Don't tap on the floor and have your butt come forward because that changes the pattern of the overall lift, okay? So if you struggle with barbell cycling or when we have athletes who do, we warm up with the rhythms, with those pumps, we go into the Dane snatches, and then long-term, six to 12 months later, they're in a really good position to barbell cycle very well. Okay, I wanna beat this point home. When we have CrossFitters come in the gym here at Garage Strength, the big thing that we do is we find the benchmark exercises that CrossFitters typically will do on a regular basis. And then when they do those typical movements in their comps, we have to find the movements to make those exercises better. Double unders was the first one, right? The second one was barbell cycling. The third one is sprinting. Sprints often happen, they could be 400 meters, 800 meters, not technically a sprint, but these things happen pretty regularly. Even between barbells, we've gotta think about accelerating as quickly in our sprint to the next barbell if we're in a ladder, anything like that. So the first aspect is how do we get better at sprinting? Number one, CrossFitters, you guys are gonna get triggered and comment down below and you're probably gonna talk trash on me, but you don't really know how to run. You sort of remind me of watching wrestlers run. Just learn some decent mechanics of acceleration. We wanna think about putting force down into the ground, get a little bit of a chest lean, and we wanna think about extending without this heel sort of dropping. Oftentimes, and I know that you are under a lot of fatigue, we'll see sort of that heel drop, and it's just like almost like a wave watching you run. Again, very similar to watching a wrestler run. We can focus on movements that will improve your sprint, okay? So the easiest way to do that one would just be go out in the field and sprint once a week, five to 10 reps of 100 yards. That's gonna be fantastic. But one of my easiest ways, or one of the easiest ways that I think that you can get yourself to run faster is to regularly engage with resisted sprinting. So that can be using a 1080, that could be using a sled. And then after I give you this one here, we're gonna go into the absolute best way to improve that sprint. So we can do something like sprint 10 yards or 15 yards here with a weight, okay, but usually about 10% of your body weight. I do wanna include that here because CrossFitters, you guys love to work. You love to freaking train hard. You love to crush it. You love to get your heart rate through the roof. You love to brag about it and tell everybody because you guys are freaks. You don't need to put 150 pounds on the sled though and brag about it. So that's the first aspect. Just take about 10% of your body weight and I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna try and sprint. <laughs> here so we can focus on how we're driving to improve our overall sprint mechanics the second part of this like i mentioned you don't like to do things easy because there's a cool aspect of how much work you guys do but in this case if you notice i'm resting okay if i want to get faster i should be taking a rest as crazy as that sounds if we can do a sprint and then rest for two to four minutes, we're gonna focus on getting faster. So a sprint session for CrossFit needs to focus on that quality of getting faster, not on the quality of endurance. So you sprint there, rest two to four minutes, sprint again. That's gonna help the quality of your speed improve. And it's gonna take time, it's just like endurance, it's gonna take a long time. Then another thing you can do outside of the resistance sprints is do hill sprints. You can use hill sprints twice a week and you can use it one as an endurance aspect and then two as a way to improve your overall speed. But again, when you're focusing on speed, focus on the rest. And when you're using a resistance sled, 10% of your body weight should be perfectly fine. And then finally, again, try and engage with those proper sprint mechanics. And this is all gonna help you guys run faster inside those comps. Okay, a little bonus to the sprint section is that CrossFitters don't usually do a lot of unilateral strength work as far as like single leg squats because it's usually not in the games or it's not in the comps. One thing that's like a little cheat code to developing a lot of strength on the posterior chain 
and helping with speed is gonna be doing a single leg squat. So if I get in position here, this would be what I, I refer to as a single leg squat, right? So I get here and I might do like two or three reps. Now, one of the factors that I really like when I'm using weight, I'm gonna demonstrate here shortly, is that I want to do unbroken reps. So if we're doing unbroken reps, I've gotta focus on my trunk a little bit more. And if we're on a specific day of training, so inside Peak Strength, which is our strength training app, we'll use Impulse Day, where we'll do unbroken single leg squats, and then we might rest 30 to 60 seconds, and then we'll either do a plyometric, or we might do resisted sprints, like with the sled. And that's one of the big aspects around peak strength is that we're trying to think through the scenario that you're in as a specific athlete. So inside of peak strength, you can actually select specific sports that you wanna train for. And in this case, that impulse day would be focused on the qualities that you need to be a really good CrossFitter in that case. Okay, so this would be what an unbroken set would look like. We'll get in position here. And I'll go one, two, three, okay? and we try and focus on good concentric movement as stable as possible on the eccentric so that we can then light that up and drive back up. Oh, that was not as good. I was a little clunky on that. But use that unbroken single leg squat to improve your overall speed. This is a roller that we have here available at garagestrength.com. This is something that's super stable that you guys can use to increase your strength in your hamstrings and your glutes but then also improve your overall speed. Okay, remember we're going back to those exercises that are often used in competitions and then we're trying to make you more explosive in those specific movements. Now, the next aspect that I'm gonna focus on is being explosive from a deep position. Okay, so let's think about if I'm in a deep position here and I jump, okay, here and I jump, here and I jump, right? that's gonna transfer really well to something like barbell thrusters. It's also gonna transfer well, even if I'm doing like burpee and I have to jump over a barbell or something like that, or, or jump forward, or just jump over anything. That's often what we see in comps, okay? So we have to be ready for that. So I have a couple progressions that I like to use. One would be just starting with something like this, and this is where like, if you have a longer athlete who they're probably gonna be more explosive, okay, but they might be weaker in certain ranges, like mid-range, almost where I am right here, uh, a little bit higher probably, but in this case, this is sort of like my dead zone if I'm squatting, okay? It's hard because I like to get a good bounce out of the bottom. So for me, or for an individual who is longer, if you struggle with that, you can get more explosive just by squatting here, okay? And you're gonna lose a little bit of that stretch shortening cycle, but then you have to use your arms more to jump. So you can get comfortable just doing a squat and jump here, okay? So you can sit to a box and jump. So that's one way to get better at jumping from a deep position. We can progress that into, let's say, I do a squat and jump to a box. Maybe week one, you wanna land on a box, uh, hips land above the knee, and let's say that you're jumping to a 30 inch box, or a 38, or a 42, whatever it is. You can just work on that aspect, that technique, okay? Then another thing would be we can do, I'm gonna back up a little bit here, something like a squat to the box into the hurdle hop here. I'm gonna get back and I wanna improve that ability now. I'm gonna improve my ability to squat off of the box, but then be explosive on that touch and go in the middle. So it'll be here, boom, boom, boom. So we wanna get really good at that aspect. That's something, again, inside peak strength, you're gonna see that on athlete day. You might see that on impulse day. And if you guys are wondering about strength training, if you're wondering about training with us, head over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store, or the Apple iOS store, you can download Peak Strength and you can get into that periodized program to help you guys peak for the next CrossFit comp. Now, another movement that I really like is going to be sort of like the Instagram fancy movement here, would be a knee jump. And when I do a knee jump, I want here, okay, I want my foot flat. I can cheat a little here when my toes are down. When I go here, it's a lot harder. And I wanna lengthen my quads. And I'm gonna feel a little bit of a stretch in the top of my ankle here. Okay, and I just wanna think about good arm swing. And what's interesting with this is we're in a deep position. This is gonna help us accelerate a barbell really, really freaking well. But it's also going to improve our ability to be more explosive. So we can just get set here and go, boom, okay? And we got our raggedy garage strength towel here. Boom, okay, so that's the first progression of this. 
the next thing that we can do would then be here. And again, we can go up to a box or I can do a bound. I can go here. Boom. So we want to work through being explosive from a really deep position. You can do this squat to the box, squat to the box to a box, jump to a box, squat to a box, hurdle hop. You can get into the kneeling jumps, kneeling jump to bound. And I got a strength movement that I'm going to show you now that's also really, really good for getting explosive out of that bottom position, which can improve one, your jumping ability, but also your strength in that thruster. This is going to be using a back squat position. And in this case, I would use a high bar, full range of motion back squat. If I'm in a CrossFit comp and we're doing like, let's say a squat ladder, I would make the argument that you probably should squat low bar Maybe you still go full range of motion depending upon the rules of, of, of the degrees and who's judging and things like that. If you're in a session though where you're trying to improve something specifically like explosiveness, then you can do something like this. Okay, so one, I'm gonna show you an unbroken set. So let's say I have, let's just pretend I have a lot of weight on the bar, which I do not have a lot of weight on the bar, but I do an unbroken set of three. So I'll go here. <laughs> Okay, one variation that I really, really like would be, and this is gonna help your deadlifts and your cleans and being explosive out of that very deep position, would be a pause into unbroken. So let's say we do like this. One, two, Okay, so that's another variation. And then finally, one thing I really like to do is take percentages of someone's max. So let's say someone max is 200 kilo back squat. Let's take 80% of that and they gotta hit that for a double and we're gonna time it. We're gonna time the double to see how they're feeling, how they're improving, how strong they're getting out of that stretch shortening cycle on the bottom. So we go here, start to clock. Okay, so you have timed, you have unbroken, and the thing is is that an unbroken set is slightly different from a time set based off of the fact that you might have a prescription of a load, things like that. The pause into the unbroken is freaking awesome for improving that strength at the bottom and also improving your deadlifts. And this is like one of my all time favorite ways to execute a high bar back squat to then lead to greater performance in the CrossFit world. Okay, so now we're gonna go into everybody's favorite, the top two, kipping pull-ups, muscle-ups. And I don't care, I'm not gonna come out and I'm not the strength coach that hates kipping pull-ups or muscle-ups. I mean, obviously I think muscle-ups are great, but also kipping pull-ups, I don't care if you do it, it's part of the sport, so we've gotta train it. With that being said, I think there's a couple things that we have to focus on is that if we have an athlete come in here and they can barely do, let's say, three or four or five pull-ups, dead hang, then we need to improve that aspect. Okay, we don't necessarily need to do kipping pull-ups to the T like all of the time. Yes, we should still do them because that athlete who could only get three to four uh, dead hang pull-ups might be able to get close to 10 kipping pull-ups. But we need to make sure that their shoulders are strong, their lats are strong, their biceps are strong. And when we go into this, I actually think that doing rope climbs is probably one of the best ways to get really good at both kipping pull-ups and muscle-ups. When I want to do a pull-up, okay, the first thing I want to do is actually focus on good technique. Okay, so starting from a dead hang position, and I think that when you're further out from a CrossFit comp, you can do a lot more like general sort of classic style periodization. Build a lot of strength in your lats, build a lot of strength in your biceps. And then as you get closer to the comp, it's gonna be a little bit more of like disarray in your periodization. So we would be setting up getting here with holding almost like a hollow position here. Pull up, here, pull up, here. And try and pause at the bottom, you know, like one, two, up. Boom, okay, so we get really good at a dead hang pull up. The other aspect that I really like to do, because CrossFitters, you guys are doing so much work all the time. You're under a lot of stress constantly. So with the older clients, okay, I think that they should be getting really good at something like a neutral grip pull up. So that's a little bit easier on their shoulders, a little bit easier on their lats, uh, in the sense of there's a slightly lower degree of rate of injury when you're doing a neutral grip pull up. So we're here. Up. Now, one way that I like to improve muscle ups, kipping pull ups, is getting really good at these, getting really good at weighted pull ups, and then getting really good at drop sets where we're like, okay, sets of 17 to failure, you know, basically you're going to failure. And then we can even get into other exercises that are more explosive. And that's where we're gonna go over here. We're gonna check out these rings and 
a bar here. Now, what I like to do, there's a couple different aspects around this, is that I'm gonna look at an athlete and say, can they bust out again 15 to 20 pull-ups? And if they can, then we can start to really get into some of the explosive work. Some of the explosive work that we'll do might be like a closer grip here, okay? And it might be like an auditory command, okay? So we'll be here, and as a coach, you just sit here and go, go. Let them hang, have them hold one, two, three, and you're the coach, go. And they've got to pull, and they want to think about pulling that bar to their sternum and bending the bar in half. That intent is really, really, really good. That's going to get them to be more explosive. Then you can even get to the point here where over time, if they're really good at this, and you see that they could just be a little bit more explosive in their back and their lats, and that will help them with the rope climbs. Then you can start to do something where you just let go and grab again. So we'll be here. Okay, and even there I had a little bit of a kip. So you start to use explosive pull-ups with a little bit of a kip, and that's gonna transfer really well to when you do kipping pulps, when you do muscle ups. It's gonna help you be more explosive in your laps, but you've gotta master just doing a proper dead hang pull up. Then you have to master a proper dead hang pull up with weight. Then you start to work into those drop sets, neutral grips, chin ups, normal pull ups to failure. Okay, then you can get into the auditory command. Then you can get into like letting go and catching. And then you get more into rope climbs, Donkey Kongs, anything along those lines to help you get more explosive, specifically for kipping pull ups and for muscle ups. All right, so now we're looking at deadlifts, okay? This is a big one because I think, especially if we're on like a ladder or a rep ladder or anything like that, if we can really master deadlifts, it can be a huge, huge push for where you're at uh, in a CrossFit comp. And we haven't even really gone into any endurance type stuff or even a ton of work even around thrusters. So let us know if you want us to go a little bit further in that regard. Now, with the deadlifts, one of the best things that we can do is think about First, when we're doing deadlift technique, okay, we wanna think about pushing through the floor, okay, obviously driving through the floor as much as possible. It's okay to round your back slightly. Set that pack back, sort of like here, and I like to think about my lats are just sort of like flexing here a little bit, and I'm gonna be rounded in my upper back, but I actually wanna do that when I'm setting up. And then as my knees come back, once I get past this position here, I wanna bring those hips through as quickly as possible. If you can do sumo, do sumo. If it's in the comp and you're allowed to do sumo, do it. I'm not a big sumo guy only because I don't like it, like meaning the technique of it. But what I would then do is if we're using a conventional stance, okay, in this situation, I want to master doing touch and goes, okay? So something that I would do, and this would be similar to what we did with the barbell on the pumps with the, with the snatches, would be we wanna master a rhythm, okay? We wanna find a rhythm. And what's interesting with this is that when I deadlifted 705 pounds, this was a drill I used just to feel the groove off the floor uh, when I would be warming up. So we would get set here. Let's pretend I'm using a hook grip, something like that. I wanna just get here. And we're just doing like a simple Dane deadlift there, okay? Like up to the knee, back down, up to the knee, back down, up to the knee, back down. And then we can even do that from a floating position. Okay, so if you do that from a floating position, it might be like this. What's interesting is that when you float, when you're hitting it from a floating position, you're gonna keep the bar even tighter. So it's really, really good to use this as a pattern warm up as a way to feel that initiation right off the floor to have the, the knees come back and to have that chest start to rise. I also mentioned the single leg squats earlier. A lot of athletes and some CrossFitters you'll see when they fatigue, they struggle to really lock out. And that's where we see these CrossFit meme videos, right? Where they just look terrible on the lockout of a deadlift. The single leg squat is going to really help the glutes learn how to extend through at the top of a deadlift. So that is a really good variation or a good assistance lift. Now, after we hit those Dane deads, the rhythm deads there, the floating position, the next thing I like to do is I wanna get into a position here, and I'm gonna give you two variations. The first one, and this is from like an old school, I think I was in high school when I first saw this lift, it's known as a dimmel deadlift. Uh, we would have powerlifting comps at my high school, and this guy would come in and say, this is the best way to finish a lockout. So for CrossFit, you guys are doing a lot, oftentimes, like super high reps. If that is the case, okay, a dimmel deadlift is going to pay off pretty well if your weakness is the lockout, 
Okay, so a dimmel dead might be here. Let me just get at the top position. And you might go set to 17 to 25 reps. Just cranking it, okay? Now, a lot of you probably like to use rack pulls, like rack pulls from the knee. I think they're the most overrated pulling exercise in the history of the world. I've seen guys deadlift from a rack position like 700 pounds, they can barely pull 500. I don't think it's worth your time, especially in a sport like CrossFit where you've gotta be very precise with your exercise choice, okay? I think a dimmel dead is gonna be way better and the next exercise I'm gonna give you later is the best for the lockout, okay? Now, I showed you the dimmel dead there. This one here, this isn't the best one, but this is one of the best, is going to be a slow eccentric touch and go. So I would have here in this position, I'm gonna get set, come up, one, two, three. I almost wanna give a little bit of that, that little Joel Seidman tap, right there. Okay, so we actually use a slow eccentric boom, slow eccentric boom. And that enables us to get a little bit of momentum off the floor. And if we're controlling the slow eccentric, we're gonna feel the motor pattern a lot more. So as we get back off the bounce, the bar's gonna be really tight. Get really good at that. And then finally, this is my favorite, okay? So I mentioned earlier, when I pulled 705, I did a lot of the, the Dane deads, like that rhythm dead off the floor as a warm up to sort of feel where I wanted to be. This movement was the back end version of the Dane deads, okay? I would hit as high as possible on this exercise because I knew it was a cheat code, okay? So I would do this, and I would PR my pulls. Because of the way I was doing them, I was loading my hamstring, loading my glutes, loading my lower back, feeling the weight, and then within two to four weeks after hitting a PR on this lift, I could then hit a PR off the floor, okay? As long as everything was lining up, as long as I was doing those single leg squats, the, the pause squats, stuff like that. So in a CrossFit setting, we've got to look at this again from a periodization aspect of, this might be something we do 12 to 16 weeks out from a comp maybe even longer, okay? But this is going to help us then when we get into the competition to do touch and goes, to then build through a ladder, to then execute at very high load, or even with an endurance-based uh, setting with a deadlift as well. So what this is, is it's a top-down deadlift, okay? And so I get my straps on, okay? So I get set here, and I wanna get set, <clears throat> take two steps back, and I wanna round just a little bit, and then I actually walk it back in. And I am not lying here. You take this out from the hip, you take one or two steps and you go, and you will PR your overall deadlift with that top down pull. Okay, you get a little bit of that stretch shortening cycle. You start in a more advantageous position. So you're here, and then as you go through the eccentric, everything starts to wake up. Your brain is aware of what it has to do to then lift this back up because it's already lifted it. It's already in this position. The hardest part of the deadlift is off the floor because your body isn't aware of what it has to do yet. So you're pulling on this from a dead position, dead lift, right? A dead stop. So it takes a while for your brain to recruit. You're already recruiting in this sense. So if you're struggling, you're at a plateau, use the top down deadlift. This is gonna help you PR your dead. It's also a movement that you can do for like 10 to 15 reps at pretty high weight and it's gonna help you improve your overall explosiveness in the sport of CrossFit. If you guys need help with your training, head over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store, or the Apple iOS Store, because remember, freaks, if you wanna become a champion, you've always gotta cultivate your power. Peace.